I'm joined by Pat and Ralph. How's it going, guys? Doing well. Doing good, doing good Jack. I'm glad you guys could join us. Ralph joined us at the last second, uh, as yeah. always, did, did us a favor here. Um, before I go on, though, subscribe, tell a friend, give us a thumbs up, all that fun stuff. But before we go on, Pat, we want to know your story, how you got hooked. All right. This TV with, show Lost. You know, my, uh, I watched Lost from the beginning. My wife let me know that there was this TV show coming on called Lost that she saw a preview for. And so I said, sure, we'll watch that. Uh, we had just uh, adopted our daughter, and so we were like happy to have some kind of entertainment. So I would never watch Lost until after I put my daughter to sleep, and that was so. Sometimes we would see the episode late, but I saw every episode live. And around season three is when I started listening to this one podcast with a guy named Jay and a guy named Jack. <laughs> uh, so, so I regret missing the very first offering of the season, you guys. But I came in around the end of season three, and I would listen to you guys on the treadmill, and I would get so angry at both of you. So. I just enjoyed reading, just enjoyed listening to the uh, to all the podcasts. You got angry. I, I, I don't understand. Got angry. You know, I, you know because I, I had opinions different than the, you guys had. You know, it's, it's it's not unusual for people watching laws to have different opinions. Which I, I you know, it's funny because we were talking beforehand about emails and stuff. People would be mad. I go, but everybody has a different opinion. And yeah. that, you, you kind of diffuse the situation that way. Some people wouldn't get it. I'm sure Ralph got the same problem with Darmalars that people just go, but you're wrong. I go, yeah, I probably am, but you're probably wrong too. Right, right. No, we were always right, and people agreed. <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> but I think what's – and I've, I brought this up before is that's what's great about Lost is it, there's many interpretations and – Different people can come away with different things. And it's kind of great. Like a lot of times when you hear like a creator say, oh, I'm going to, uh, you know, if they have a question, someone has a question, they could be like, oh, I left that up to the viewer. Um, that always sounds cheap to me. <clears throat> but in Lost, it was specifically designed that way. And it definitely created conversations, uh, heated or not heated. Um, a lot of times what was fun about about those different emails that we would get is they may bring up a point that we didn't think about, or you start kind of piecing together all of these different points and kind of try to triangulate where the show is going. And then, you know, when they finally have something revealed in the show, you're like, Oh, it was that. And I think this, uh, the second episode we're going to discuss the Kate episodes kind of fun because it's one of those episodes where, there's there's a problem and you could see all these different people who may have caused that problem right and they all have valid you know valid reasons for creating that problem and then you find out what the answer to that problem was but then there's also an added layer of kate was involved with this right exactly it wasn't just one person and so it's what i like what? about lost is is you can take you can take any character and you can anyone could throw them into the mix and I think it's perfectly valid uh, until it tells us we're all wrong. <laughs> so that's well, they're I also kinda, I kind of enjoy that they're part of the show. Flawed. They're, they're flawed human beings. They're they're human. It's right. not like a show where they yeah. always have this you know you have the, the the saints and all that. You know they have we're we all can make mistakes and I think that's what lost like you're saying what lost it could have been anybody. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, that's what I like about the show, being able to allow the, the, the audience to communicate and talk amongst, talk amongst each other to, to try to piece the puzzle together. Yeah, it's it's yeah, kind of fun. It, it's communal. Yeah, it, really, it really promoted like a fan engagement because everybody wanted to talk about all these different issues and work out your interpretations. And, and I didn't mind that not every question was answered because, you know, that's kind of like the way life is. I mean, sometimes we have to live with unknowns. Mm -hmm. So, so I just enjoyed everything about it. So I'll, I'll be I'm always promoting that show. Well, you were saying how you, you uh, Pat, how you said we were, you'd, we'd get angry. Listen to Jay and I on, on, on when you're on the treadmill. There were times that we would record on Wednesday night or whenever it, some, it was on Thursday, whatever night it was on, we would record right night. afterwards. Well, after that, because we'd only watched it once, I'd watch it two or three times that I probably would change my opinion from that yeah. night to the second, we did a second podcast that week, usually on Saturday or Sunday. Sometimes yeah, I just like I, the, I, I was wrong, so I you know I just like the Rose and Bernard working for Dharma thing. You change your mind <laughs> on that. That that never that never stuck. You never stuck with that one. 
<laughs> there, are some, there are some things. I, there are some things I did stick with, and you know, I took a lot. I took some crap for it, but uh, underwater hatch. But I, get, I was, uh, I stuck with it, and you know, I said there, sometimes I, I wouldn't. But like some of the simple things, where you're like, going, I didn't see that because I was writing down notes, yeah. or you know, I, I didn't, I didn't interpret it the way it was supposed to be interpreted, or like you said, it was mm -hmm. one of those things where. They, they were to, you know, like you said, they're leaving it for us to decide. And I'm like going, well, you know what? I've changed my mind on what I think how that was. Well, like speaking of the underwater hatch, the swan station is very, very, very below the ground. So who's to say that it's not below sea level? So you could have been right from day one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's the thing is you can, you can take what they gave us and twist it and turn it to fit the story. So the answers may not be specifically out there, like set in stone, but I feel like the show's given us enough to close every single gap. And it's still up to us. I don't know, what is this, 10 years later almost? And we're yeah. still cl closing in gaps. So, uh, well, this, this episode was, was 15 years, 15 years ago. Jesus. So, yeah, and we're, oh, we're still talking about it, but you guys want you guys ready to get into it? I'm ready. All right, let's yeah, start. Let's, with, do it. let's start with the greater good. What did you guys think of this episode? Let's start with Pat. Oh, I think yeah. that I I enjoy the on island story more than Saeed's backstory, which you know, which was fine. And in particularly, it, it's it's interesting to look back at it on a historical context of what was going on at the time with our invasion of Iraq and. And the fact that they were making a TV show with a like an Iraqi protagonist was kind of like you know, groundbreaking for for TV and also for, like for America at that time. Right. Um, but but it was but it was kind of like a it wasn't like necessarily like a like a Jack Bauer twenty four type of of episode, but it almost was kind of that. But the stuff on island, whenever Locke is involved, it's good. And so Locke and Saeed going off into the jungle, and Saeed like really turning the interrogation screw on Locke, I thought was really compelling TV, particularly then when when Shannon is trying to get Saeed to, to kill Locke, right. which is not which is not the well, it's not the last time somebody on the island is trying to get somebody else to kill somebody. So yeah. I uh, so I enjoyed watching watching rewatching this for this podcast uh, to see that kind of like being laid out. And you, Ralph? Yeah, I think I, I think I've mentioned this before. Um, with when it comes to the rewatches, uh, I'm more interested in the on island stuff than the flashback because I think, um, we remember the show pretty well. Um, we've all watched it several times, and the flashbacks all come to a conclusion pretty much. Um, there isn't really a lot, there's not really a lot of mystery. Um, I think because the flashbacks are so character centric and, and letting us know what their backstory is. Once you, once you watch the full series all the way through, you get their entire backstory from beginning. You're all good to go. You don't need to know any more information. The mysterious stuff happens on the Island. And so it's fun to watch uh, seeds being planted um, on the Island stuff. That's going to come into effect later, like stuff with the hatch, um, stuff with Boone on the radio, uh, uh, sending out the signal. We know who's on the other end, but it's right. fun seeing that again. Right. Um, and then there's there's certain things on the episodes. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it on the second episode where they set up some stuff with Walt. Uh, I think that's really interesting. Um, and I don't, I, I, I can't wait to get into that because I'm not really sure if if it's, if we get a full explanation of what he saw, but we can piece that together. But I think it's more interesting. The on island stuff's always more interesting. And uh yeah, it, it's the on island stuff's great. And this is a this is like these two episodes are the two episodes that precede the the three part finale. And yeah. so we're really ramping up to um that first finale, which is amazing. Right. So um yeah, you kind of want to see more of that. And we get our first introduction to Dr. Ars. Yes. <laughs> I believe <laughs> I believe it's I, that might be the second episode. But but yeah, it's well, uh, he's been he, I think he's been we all know how before, then. but I think the first time we've seen him, isn't it? 
this, yeah. the next episode. This, this might be the first time that they even mention him. I mean, at, at some point we will see like a, a flashback to an earlier time on the the island where Arst is, is featured. They bring him back in future seasons. But but yeah. honestly, I, it really seems like he appears and everybody is like Arst, you know, like yelling his name so that we know his name because we've not right. seen him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think at that point we weren't really picking the show apart. Maybe as as, yeah. as much as we did later on, and there probably weren't all the yeah. websites that had all the information and all the different scenes and all the different characters. Again, we've said a hundred times that's probably why Nikki and Paula didn't work because there was no way you it could was just a too late. Yeah, yeah, it was too late in too late in the, in the deal. But I did like this flashback because it does explain why Saeed was on the plane. Sure. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the, you know, when we get to that, but uh, I do like in the beginning how Saeed's telling Shannon, you know, Shannon's over Boone, the dead Boone there, and she, and she says he was brave, he was this, he was that. And at this point, we don't know that Shannon wants to kill Locke. Right. Right. We don't right. know that. But uh, I like that. Then we go to the flashback back on Saeed. The CIA is talking to him, and he's willing to do anything for Nadia, anything for Nadia. But at the end of the show, he doesn't go to the next level with Nadia. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know it's an I, argument going back and forth with people, but I, it, I don't. I, it's, go, go ahead, Rob. Uh, Sorry. I don't know. I, I I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, I feel like. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Go ahead, because I can't. I really don't have an argument for or against it. Uh, yeah, I, I think I, it makes more sense for Nadia to be there, but I it, I don't know. We get some kind of like like character closure for having you know because Shannon was presented to us and then she's kind of killed off, and bringing her back we kind of accept. But 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 I agree with you. Shannon was kind of like a like an underused character through the the first couple seasons, and then well you know no more. But yeah, there's a point in season six, I believe. Where Saeed dies, and they they put him in a pool, and they say that he's like tainted. So maybe when he goes to the afterlife, Shannon's like a consolation prize. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. maybe there's maybe. something about him where he's not he's not fully pure. So well, uh, maybe I'm just it's grasping at straws. <laughs> maybe I'm just biased because Andrea has been on this 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 rewatch and Maggie Grace say. has it. So <laughs> that, I, maybe that's why I, I lean more towards Nadia, but. Uh, I just, I just think it's so funny that he's so like he's got to do anything for Nadia. He's got to do anything for Nadia, you know. Yeah. It's just, but, but we do see how he he does because they did a good job in this episode showing how much he did care about Shannon, how he, you know, how he was moving towards Shannon and all that different stuff. But then they 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 bury Boone on Boone Hill. I think that's what the the they called it, right? Or at least the the crew did. Yeah, I think that's sort of a like Inside like the term tailies. Like yeah, it's kind of one of those. So and I the, don't think it was mentioned on the show, but and, and the music that plays during the funeral is called the Boonerol. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. But and nobody wants. Did you know? <laughs> did you notice how they didn't cover his face with the tarp no. when they were taking him? That's kind of gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was an open casket. I mean, it's right, oh, right. Yeah. You ever been to one of those funerals? I sit in the back. Oh. <laughs> I won't go up there. That's. Yeah, I just, I've, I've been to a few of them. It's like, yeah, but anyway. <laughs> but I, it's the I, bottom I, half. I, you should yeah. do it for yours. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't do that for me. I, I look bad enough now. Uh, <laughs> I don't people see me dead. It's like, no, you, you don't no, have to put bottom, yourself through that. The bottom half is open. <laughs> that would not improve it. No, no. My feet. Um, I got ugly feet, so I don't know if that would, that would work either. Get you uh, yeah, <laughs> nobody wants like to Jack's step dad. <laughs> white shoes, <laughs> white tennis shoes. Yeah, uh, no one steps, but Said steps up and says he didn't know Boone very well, but he talks about him. You know, he tells how he, you know, he went, he went out to save Joanna and all the different stuff. And you think they mentioned that Joanna part because she's mentioned later on the next in, episode? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I think that they needed to, uh, uh, to provide the, like the link for that. So whenever whenever Sawyer nails uh, Kate with Joanna's passport, that we remember the whole scenario. Right. So I, I, I didn't think about that until I was watching Born to Run. I go, oh, that's probably why they they did that. And, you know, because he didn't save Joanna. He, she tried. Right. But yeah. 
technically he he could have got her killed because he was drowning in Jack's safety. <laughs> Jack yeah. might have saved Joanna if, if Boone had not been there needing to be saved. Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, Boone, I would give Boone credit. At yeah. least he went out there and did it. Uh, they're concerned about Jack. Jack's not sleeping. That's my garage door opening up. If you hear a loud noise, I apologize. But that's it's, my it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Uh, what do you think about Jack needing some? We've all been there. I, I, I've been there where I, I just can't sleep. <laughs> the the thing that I liked about <laughs> about the Jack subplot is that at the last episode was Jack. It ended with Jack going like, "I'm gonna get Locke," you know. And you're right. like, "Oh my God, Jack is gonna go and he's gonna beat up Locke or whatever." And you know, and immediately Kate drugs him and knocks him out. And so it's kind of it's kind of like they need like this to be a Saeed episode, and they need like Locke not to be killed by Jack or whatever. They need yeah. Saeed and, Jack and Locke to do things, and so. Kate has to step up and like fix the problem that that Jack is by drugging him just to just to provide that breathing room for Faye to have time with Locke. Well, I think Jack had some reason. Well, obviously, he had some reason to be upset with him. You know, he he oh, yeah. needed to know what happened with Boone. To, I mean, I don't think he could have saved him no matter what. But yeah. as a doctor, you need to have all the information so you can you know do the best you can. But and Locke lied about it. Yeah. yeah. So and you know Jack, Jack has to fix everything. So <laughs> I side with Jack on this one. A lot of people yeah. probably don't, but I side with Jack on it. No, I I don't fault Jack at all. Um, but I I again I enjoyed the stuff with Kate and Jack because it is a conflict between between Kate and Jack, and then the next episode there's a conflict between Kate and Sawyer. And so there's right. this is this is a nice balancing act because the Kate Jack Kate Sawyer dynamic is like super important. For the show, uh, even though it, it, it's not a man of faith, man of science type, you know, conflict right. going on, which is the big conflict <clears throat> on Lost. But but Kate's relationship with those two guys is so important, and it was it was good to see both of those relationships kind of eroded right before the big finales that came up. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. Good point. But also, you had you had the lock and Jack friction continuing, which continues throughout the show. So yeah, anyway, that's it. I enjoy that part of the show too, but you, you uh, Pat, you were saying how the, you made a good point about how both episodes go from Sawyer and Kate Friction, Jack and Kate Friction and all that different stuff. And that, I, you know, the, it wasn't important to me, you know, who she ended up with, but a lot of people, it was important to it. I'm not criticizing <laughs> people, but right. a lot of people did care about that. So, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed watching that's, it, but it wasn't that's another thought. thing that's great about the show is there's something for everybody. So you can either be a person into the relationships. You could be a person into the mythology. You could be a person just into the drama of it all. You know, there's, there's, you know, it's got kind of everything in it. Uh, watching this episode and seeing uh, sort of Sawyer, the Sawyer Jack Kate dynamic uh, made me mad that and I don't really care about the re relationship stuff, but it made me really mad knowing that Kate ultimately ends up with Sawyer. Because <laughs> <laughs> if there's 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 two relationships on the show that I absolutely loved, uh, uh, Hurley and Libby, I like that one, and then um, Sawyer and Juliet. Right, yeah. those were two relationships where I'm like, okay, those need to like continue on. But, but at least you should be happy that in the in the limbo extra temporal afterlife, yeah. uh, Sawyer and Juliet kind of find themselves again. Yeah. Um, and the and the good thing is with all those those four characters, you have two doctors and two con men. Really, if we we'll call Kata a con man, yeah, I'll, 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 I, I should make it I should make it less gendered for that. But and you can see how occasionally it would work where the two opposites, Jack and Kate, would work. But then also it would work when the two the two <laughs> con people because usually. Kate would be trying to con Sawyer into something and he would recognize it. And he was like, I love this. Cause he's just like, yes, this is, a, I see exactly what you're doing. Where, where Jack was never happy when Kate was trying to. Con him. So, <laughs> but you know, so, but, you know good. But I know we're talking about the shipper stuff now, but I think Kate was better for Jack because <laughs> she was honest and would tell Jack flat out what, you know, you need to get some sleep. You need to stop sure. doing this. You need to, cause he doesn't listen to anyone. Cause Locke made a good point early on in the season when, when Claire gets taken, you're the doctor. You shouldn't yeah. be out chasing after all these people. Yeah. You're the doctor. Yeah. What happened? If you die, who's yeah. going to save us all? Boone? I mean, it. You know, <laughs> well, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's just like, but that's where where Kate was always very honest with Jack and upfront with him. And I think yeah. he needed he needed someone that would tell him the truth in a way, not like his dad. 
His dad would yeah. put him down. His dad would, right. would be honest with him, but also put him at any chance he could, he would just put a dagger into him where Kate would be honest with him and say, Hey, look, this is the deal. So yeah, at least at least Jack's dad never took a kidney from him, though. No, no. Well, <laughs> you know, if he could, he probably needed one, right? Yeah, yeah, or a liver. <laughs> or, or a liver, yeah. yeah. A liver, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I, uh, Cyan gets himself in and he finds the bug. So he, he gets himself into the, the cell and stuff like that. And he, with his friend and stuff like that. Uh, uh, Locke, Locke talks to Shannon about Boone. I thought that was, you know, he's got the bloody, sh I mean, he's got literally a bloody. Sh yeah. He's got all that Boone blood on him. It's like, yeah. dude, you, you know, man, you know, yeah. change their shirt. Yeah. Yeah. I, he should have rinsed. He washed the shirt before he talked to Shannon, because if, if you just, if my brother had just died or someone had just died and, you, and I blame you and you're there with all the blood on his shirt, you know, all my, my loved one's blood is on your shirt. I'm not forgiving you. Right. Damn. Right. And then after that, Shannon asked Saeed to kill Locke. Yeah. And Saeed yeah. goes, well, you know, you're not Nadia. <laughs> Again, we go back to, I can't just kill anyone. Uh, Kate drugs, Jack. We talked about that. Uh, uh, Locke could use some uh, a spray. I said we could use it. He's rinsing out. There's no way he's gonna get the blood out of that shirt with just water. Am I right? <laughs> right. No, there's no way. Right. But It'd blood, be I mean, blood, yes, blood's gonna come. It would look like a tie dye shirt, but just red. Yeah. But I go <laughs> even, even with spray and wash. That's not coming coming out. Well, you know, we we know that the island has magical properties and it has magical laundry properties as well. So that, now that's, that's that's the, I know that you get the water from the the fall, but don't they like bathe in that water? And he's rinsing his blood in that. Well, yeah, yeah, but, that was uh, drinking water. Yeah, right. None of that is sanitary. Right. Wouldn't salt water work better on the shirt, getting the blood out? Probably. Probably. Yeah. And the waves, yeah. the power of the waves. I mean, get, get again, a little I, sand I, in there. Yeah. I never trained for a walkabout, so I don't. I don't know what I'm doing there. But I. I, I mean, there think... is a detergent called Tide, so. <laughs> it makes yeah, sense. There, you, there you go. Uh, see, uh, then we uh, when Locke and and uh, uh, Saeed are walking, he asks Locke about his scar. His yeah, kidney the, scar. the war wound, yeah. The war wound, yeah. And, and so Side wants to show he wants to show him where the plane was. Locke says he will. Uh we'll go back to the I won't go back to the flashback right now. We don't need to. Uh Locke tells him <laughs> <laughs> Locke tell is honest with Said and tells him he's the one that hit him over the head. Yeah, see, and that was yeah. that was like a pretty interesting scene. Because you know, because I had forgotten that Locke tells Saeed exactly that and and it, it's it's a good deal because it, it is something where Locke is like look I'm going to give you something that's going to make me look bad you know and I'm going to trust you with the information and it's not going to be good for me and in many ways you know we we see that with like Walt telling uh telling his dad that hey I, I set fire to the uh to the, to the, to the first raft uh, so, but I, I was impressed by that scene. I remember, remember uh, Ralph, while you talk in one second, um, the first time I saw that, I was like, so he's going to have to kill Locke. I mean, like, you know, it, when I first saw that, but then when I watched on the rewatch, I, I accepted more. I bought it more that so he would be given this information and he would, it, if not necessarily buy what Locke was telling him, but would just kind of like put it away for like maybe later use, you know, that he knew something about the way Locke worked. Hi, Ralph. I'm sorry for the, that scene. Those scenes that you mentioned with uh, with uh, Walt telling about the burning raft and and Locke telling about the uh, hitting him over the head. Um, those are definitely things that they were like, okay, this need those needs are to be wrapped up before we move on with the second season. So it was. Uh, <laughs> it's it's interesting um, that Syed really didn't go completely just well, I th I think on him, but. I think with this scene, Locke needed Saeed. I think he probably knew that Shannon might have asked Locke, to, you know, asked Saeed, hey, do him in, kill him, you know, mm -hmm. do him some harm. Because uh, he was, he knew he's, Locke knew he was being interrogated by Saeed. Yeah. yeah. He knew it. And so he, I think he just put his cards on the table saying, trying to get hit, get Locke's trust. I mean, uh, Saeed's trust. If I could, if I'm honest with you about this, something where you, you could lose, you could probably kill me over. Have I think you guys seen the TV show Black Sails? I watched no. a couple of episodes, but didn't, didn't finish but it. It's okay. I'm not going to bust on you, although you should watch it all. You should. Oh. But I'm not going to give any spoilers, but there is a scene where a character confesses something to another character. And it's like super powerful and much in the same way where it's, but it was done where I'm going to tell you something that makes me look bad. 
and it can put me at risk, but it is to for you to us to respect me that I have done this thing that you did not know know about, you know. Right. And so and so I, I I remember watching the show and we did not know that Locke was the one who hit Saeed. Is that correct? Correct. This I, is the first time we heard. Yeah. And and it, it came as a shock to me. I mean, like, yeah. there were still some people who like forget and they think Rousseau did it or something. No, but, I thought we I thought we did know. I don't think so. I, I don't this, think we did. I, think I thought this I thought we I thought we did. I think, if you go back and do the rewatch, because the last time I rewatched it, I remember knowing that it was Locke that did it, but I don't know if they they tell the audience that he does. Yeah, and, and if I'm wrong, because I've not wa- rewatched the whole. The whole I swear, I, I I remember talking about another rewatch, and maybe it's like Ralph said. I just I just I I know about it. We, so, we, yeah. we remember it, and so yeah. we imagine that we have seen it at some point. Because when you watch, when you do the rewatch on that episode, and they're doing the triangulation. <clears throat> you tend to focus on where Locke is during that whole storyline. Right. And it, it adds up. And, but I don't think they, I don't know if they tell you, but yeah, to me, it was a shock. It yeah. It was like a shocking shock. reveal. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to have to I'm, rewatch again. I'm going to yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> have to go back and watch. Uh, Said asked Locke about the hatch and Locke, goes, uh, 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 after he's well, just been honest. Now yeah. he's like, uh, yeah, well, you know, clean and this. Yeah. You know, want to give up that hatch? He, he doesn't lie. He, I mean, he lies by omission, but but he he just kind of like deflects the whole thing. But as we know, Saeed has a superpower, which is I know when you're being you deceptive. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and that comes back around at the end of that episode. Yeah, but then Saeed tells Shannon, "I think it was an accident. I think Locke was telling the truth." Yeah, mm-hmm. and so and, he's not he's not going to kill kill him. And, and it is legit in that. I mean, we know that Locke contributed to Boone's, you know, situation because Locke was driven to follow this vision that he had. Right. Uh, but but Locke did not personally have any anything against Boone. In fact, Boone was like an assistant to him. He kind of like relied on Boone as an yeah. ally in what he was doing. So it was it was bad for him as well for Boone to, to get harmed. But but we know that he's responsible at least in some way of getting Boone up into that aircraft. Yeah, exactly. Uh, then we find out that uh, Jack's key that around his neck is gone. So he, right <laughs> yeah. away he thinks it's Sawyer. No, he thought, did he think it was Sawyer or Locke? Uh, I, I, you know, I can't remember. But but it was it was one of those two that he assumed had taken. I, I, it might it might have been Locke. Key. I think he blamed Locke, and then uh, yeah, I think so. But we find out Shannon took the key. Right now, in fact, Saeed was the one who who immediately talked uh, Jack down. That yeah. it was not Locke. You're right because because. Taid immediately put the puzzle together of, of who would want to get a gun at that moment. It was right after Saeed told Shannon, I'm not going to harm Locke. Yeah. And then going to the flashback, we got the truck of C4, and Saeed tells uh, uh, Saman, uh, Asman. I, I can't read my writing. I can't like, remember. I, th- like I, thought was, I thought it was Hassan, but I might. I might it might be Hassan. Again, I apologize. Uh, that he was working with the CIA, and then he kills himself. Yeah. Not Saeed, but I was like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! That's 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 which was unusual because he he was having trouble with the whole detonating himself, you know, killing himself on the thing. He didn't really want to do it. Well, he he didn't want to harm anybody who was innocent. Right. What he that's was true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 it, but it did seem it was very convenient for Saeed that his buddy decided to commit suicide instead of doing a murder suicide, which would have been right. completely, you know, rougher. Yeah. And sometimes life works out for you, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then we go back and Shannon is holding a gun on lock. Yeah. So you think, I'm thinking the whole time, there's no way Shannon's going to shoot lock. There's just no <laughs> way. There's just well, no I mean, way. I mean, technically you were correct, but <laughs> she didn't shoot it much, but yeah. No. Yeah. We have a side story because uh, Charlie's been walking around and he can't get Aaron to stop crying. But but Sawyer's voice, Sawyer's voice, he's the baby whisperer. Uh, yeah. him just Saw- speaking. Sawyer is enchanting. You know, he has ways with women and babies. So. Then we find out Nadia is living in Irvine, California, and that comes to play later on in another episode down the line. Uh, and then Saeed is supposed to be on a flight two hours from now, but he says no. I need more time. You need to change it to tomorrow. And that puts him on flight 815. Yeah. Uh, and then Locke says, take me to the hatch. And that's the end of the episode. Boom. So 
Overall, great episode, good episode. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I definitely would put it good. It, it, it's not necessarily my favorite one, but I, I and, and I, in the, the flashback, I did not find super compelling, but I found the, the island stuff very good. Yeah. Yeah, I think they had to find a reason for Saeed to be on Flight 815. And I do like how it had a twist at the end where he wasn't supposed to be on it. Right. And then he gets flipped onto the flight. Yeah, it starts playing into the whole fate of everybody right, yeah. to be on that plane. Right. So I, I, I did like that twist. And it's funny, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. When I was like, I go, hand oh, of Jacob. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot he was he wasn't originally supposed to be on the flight. Yeah, yeah. Jacob didn't necessarily, you know, arrange this unless Jacob did way behind the scenes. But but yeah, it, it was good to see somebody choose to be on that flight rather than be handed a ticket like uh, like Claire had been done for yeah. uh, for for bringing you know heading to the the doctor baby out yeah but anyway I I I enjoyed it so I thought it was very good uh, next up we have Born to Run baby I was born to run what did you guys think of this episode <laughs> off the top of your head? Uh, same deal flashback whatever I, we're so used to it I think for me. I, I, I I like Kate episodes, and so uh, so I I enjoyed this episode. I think maybe like a hair more. Now the um, the thing I particularly liked about the the on island stuff was that there was like a lot of talk about the hatch. But in, in general, you know, uh, I like Kate kicking guys' asses. I'm fine with that. She beats up a dude in the hospital. That's fine. Uh, but but I was but I was engaged. I think in trying to figure out what Kate was on the run for. But there's but there is weird things about that flashback. Like she gets like a letter from somebody with money, you know. And of course that's a very like non modern thing now where they would just be Venmo money from somebody. But yeah. like but who wrote her the letter that her mom was sick and who was sending her her money? It wasn't Tom because he seemed surprised that she showed up. I, I say it's yeah. the marshal. But man, now you, you know what you, you you could be right because the marshal was trying to like lay traps for her by by putting the uh, the plane into like a safety deposit box, then telling her where it was. So you know that happened later. But I I would not be surprised. But but then the marshal need needed to know where to send a letter that she would come by and get a drop, get the drop. But but I'm I'm fine with your theory. I think that's not I, did, I just I just I just keep throwing it out there because I always I've always said I've said this several times on this rewatch that the marshal had her and he Kate used him like we see at the end of this episode where she he she used Sun to kind of get what she wanted right. or at least try to get what she wanted. She was always good at using people. And the marshal was so bitter. I mean, he was so because you know Kate's done some bad things, but she's not public enemy number one. Right. I mean, she's not going out. She's not a serial killer going out there. She's not someone I would go fly all the way to Australia. Okay, let's go get her. I got to bring her back. It was personal. It was personal with him. And so I always, anytime there's any any kind of hole, I the marshal did it. Right. So just, <laughs> no, just I, 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 I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm fine because it, it can't be disproven, right? At this point. <laughs> <laughs> not even the not even Lindelof and Cutes can disprove it as far as I'm concerned. No, I just, so just, I like to throw that out there. We didn't see it on the show. We uh we no? it's an open question. No. Uh Kate, uh, we find out she likes to collect license plates. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she yeah. and she, well, we don't know it, we don't know who this mystery blonde is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, even though there's that but is kind of unmistakable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, then I, I it's it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, it's supposed to be a wig. Like we're supposed to not know who this is, but it turns out that it was not a wig. Yeah, it, 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 we're supposed to believe that she dyed her hair blonde and then she was going to like re dye her hair a brunette. Yeah, and you know, and and that's and that's just all to like have like a reveal that you know we're not supposed to know who this is, and then it's it's showering. Well, Kate, I, so, yeah. I did write that a uh, perfect dye job. For yes. Kate. Oh yeah. I, mean, yeah, I mean that was like professionally done. Exactly. And this, this, uh, the music in this opening scene on the soundtrack was called Kate's Motel, and nice. um, yeah, it, uh, it goes, it kind of becomes Kate's theme. There's a couple of them that appear. Uh, there's this Kate's Motel thing that hap happens at the beginning. It's like a Bernard Herrmann esque uh, musical cue, and then later you get. Um, when they're uh, when her and uh, it's a Tom, 
Yeah, Tom. Tom the yeah. doctor. Yeah. When they're when they're playing the uh, the tape, there's a there's a secondary cue, more of a like a hopeful Kate theme. So you get a couple of Kate themes in here, which is nice because um, it 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 feels a little overplayed in this episode that theme. But what's great about Jacino setting that up is um, you'll see in later seasons when like Sawyer and Jack are talking about Kate and they don't mention her by name, he'll play that theme and it's instant, instantly recognizable where you're like, oh, they're talking about Kate, right. even though they didn't say her name specifically. So it's it's kind of amazing. And what's great about Jacino is he's do, he did every single episode of Lost – uh, I'm pretty sure by himself, no one else uh, uh, worked on this score. And so know. he was able to um, kind of mold and 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 make everything so cohesive. Um, so yeah, that Kate's theme, even though it's over, I feel like it's overplayed in this episode, uh, definitely helps um, viewers down the road. It's, uh, yeah. So kudos to him. Yeah. Uh, good call, good call. Can't complain about the music. So, oh no, I wouldn't. I don't think. I don't think. I think it's the one thing about Lost. No one ever complained about the music. They complain about the ending. They can complain about different storylines. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say. The music I mean, dude, he's got an Academy Award, rightfully yeah. so. Uh, he gets the biggest movies, rightfully so. He's an amazing composer, and the fact that the thing I love about him is he. Uh, he was a fan of the show. Yeah, he loved the show, and uh, uh, I went to his concert a couple months back, and he was talking about Lost and how great it was that his uh, his youngest child was now old enough to watch the show, so he got right. to do a whole another rewatch um, um, with his with his kid. So it's kind of yeah, he's like a huge fan of the show. I have a feeling that. Uh, like I'd be able to start a whole conversation with him about lost and go on forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so he's yeah. like us. He's a geek. Right. Yeah. He's, I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, uh, yeah. Well, it's funny cause I know Jorge was a big fan of the show. Mm -hmm. but you, had, you had people like, uh, Matthew Fox and, and, and Naveen Andrews who said they'd never watched it. Yeah. There's a lot of times though, where actors <laughs> don't like to watch their own stuff. Right. It, it's kind of weird. Like I don't watch any crazy Hank TV that I'm on. <laughs> so I don't want to see me, <laughs> but I think with, uh, with acting, wouldn't it help though? If you're, you're, I mean, I'm not an actor, but if I, I could have done the scene better that way. Next time I'm in a movie, I'll do it that way or something like that. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like if you're, especially like on a, on a long running show like this, where you're learning your lines over and over again, you kind of have a pretty good handle on the character. And um, kind of remember, because I mean, we we remember everything about all the characters on Lost, pretty much. Um, uh, Matthew Fox only needs to remember one character, <laughs> and he's living he's living in that character's skin. So you know, I don't think he needs to watch the show in order to um, to work on it. But I mean, it's I don't know. And some actors don't want to know any more than what their character would know. And so, yeah, that's true. That's true. And, and so that way, when they interact with like, you know, with like Ben Linus or whatever, they, uh, they, they're not biased on what they already know about that character. Um, so maybe like, they want it to be more natural too. Maybe they don't, if maybe they'll see something in an episode that got edited or, or, or maybe they used a different take than they would have uh, wanted them to use. Right. So they probably don't want that to affect their performance down the road. That's true. So they could just want to like make sure that whatever they do is organic. I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah, that's not a new thing. I, I've heard a lot of like actors who just do not watch their own stuff. I know. I was, I've told the story before, but I was it was a thing where the Emmys and they were having different. You know, who was nominated for like best producer, best director, all that. And Matthew Fox was there with Brian Krantz and some other actors that were nominated for the show, and they were talking about their different shows. And and that's what I found out Matthew Fox didn't watch. He goes, oh, "I don't, I don't watch my show." And and Brian Krantz goes, "Really?" He goes, "You should. It's a good show." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was something that I don't, I don't know if, if, if quoting exactly, but it was just funny for Brian Krantz to say, hey, "We well, should watch. It. It's a great show." Yeah. You know what's funny is even after all these years, 
and how TV evolved since like Twin Peaks and Lost are like kind of milestones in TV. Like they're big, like kind of these these markers that you know show the evolution of TV. Even after you know ten plus years of Lost being around, on the rewatch, with the exception of the wigs, it still looks like a really modern show. It does. Like it doesn't it doesn't feel too dated. No. Maybe no. Kate's pants, <laughs> maybe some of the wardrobe <laughs> stuff, and maybe a cell phone here or there. But but for the most part, the way it's shot, the way it's acted, um, it's it's amazing that that it still holds up after this many years. Because you can watch anything from, like I think in this uh, Lost started in what two thousand four. Yeah. I think like Frasier was still on the air. Right. And it's like you watch Frasier and it just looks so dated. It's insane to see, you Cheers. know. Yeah, it's, it's insane to see things that, you know, it, it's actually still looks like it could be uh, a show that came out today. Well, that's what makes the show so great. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if the show is going to be on Disney Plus. I don't see why it wouldn't be. And uh, maybe you'll get a whole bunch of new followers come, yeah. into, come into the show. Well, that would be nice. I yeah. could live with that. Uh, we have Charlie talking to Kate about being rescued because he's he's. He, he figures his death has pushed a uh, drive shaft to the top because, you know, yeah. he, he wants that death uh, benefit. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that gets Kate's Kate rolling about getting off the island. But I always question why Kate, because she's always been the one to go. Cause you know, we were talking about earlier, you know, earlier about how Locke got hit over the head. Well, Kate would be the one you think, because who wouldn't want to get off the Kate. Obviously Locke doesn't want to get off the island, but Kate if she goes off the island, she's probably going to get arrested. Now we find out later on that didn't happen, but right, yeah, I guess you know, I think Kate was definitely somebody who would be staying on the island if she, you know, as long as she's not going to starve or something. But right. but but you do see the the like her wheel spinning where where Charlie's like, look, when when the boat when the raft you know is found, everyone's going to come and save us, and it's going to be like this crazy. We're all going to be famous, and so you can see Kate doing this kind of calculus of. You know, I can fake an identity. Do I want to be rescued on the island or do I want to be rescued on a boat? And they both, to me, seem like equally dangerous. But I guess she felt that she would have a way to slip away, you know, easier, you know, getting off the boat. I, I mean, mm -hmm. like maybe nobody would expect that. Well, um, the, mar the, the marshal's dead. Yeah. yeah. So if yeah. she goes back and she's got a different idea, she's Joanna. And that she, she, well, Kate was dead on the plane, but you think someone would have said something? No, Kate, she was, you know, someone would have said something about yeah. Kate being alive. No, Joanna died drowning and stuff like that. But you, you just kind of wonder what's going on. But it, it does, she does get her, you, you, she, where Charlie's like, hey, I'm just, I just want to, you know, drive shaft. I, I guess it could be that her plan was once she got on the raft and they got off the island, she would say, Dudes, you got to do me a solid. You, th you, you three people have got to agree that my name is Joanna. You have to trust me on this. Where she might not be able to get everybody on the island to, you know, the, the rest of everyone else to agree yeah. to, uh, to just well, back for the, I, long enough. Yeah, I feel like so the ride. The plan is for the raft to go out into the shipping lane and get picked up by a ship. Right. Um, before that ship goes in docks, she can jump ship swim to land and not have to deal with anybody. Um, once that ship reaches land, are they bringing helicopters to rescue the rest of them? And if so, she's not going to be able to jump out of a helicopter in order to, <laughs> to get free. So she's yeah. thinking that this is probably the best way to get off the island and also make an escape. Cause if they, if they come back with like some sort of aircraft or something, um, you can't really, jump ship in an airport right. you know you're going to be seen sure. so well, she they probably, probably figured it's stuff, easier what they probably done is taken a had a ship and have a helicopter fly and they would be flown back to the ship kind of like what had happened with the uh yeah with and the, the uh, show yeah. yeah when not penny's boat shows up yeah that's yeah. what i was gonna say but i, I did thought, i i it's funny i forgot that everyone didn't know about kate's past yeah, that was a great scene with Hurley, Locke, and Jack. Yeah, where where you know Hurley says, you know what, with her being a fugitive, and then he just stops and says, he it doesn't know. 
And he says, how, how am I supposed to know who knows what around here? Yeah, Hurley's and, and of very, course, very of course, frustrated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And by the end of the episode, she reveals to everybody, so then not everybody knows. So it's one of those things where it's like tying up <laughs> these loose ends where it's like yeah. – like when they're getting close to the end of the season, they're like, Oh no, you know what? No, you know, the only people that know about this is Hurley Sawyer and Jack. Right. So they're like, Oh, well shoot. You know, we got to bring other people into the fold and get going to that, caught up. Cause Jack later on, well, we'll get, I'll get to that. We'll get there. But when we see doc arts, he comes in and he starts telling him, you gotta, you gotta do this. He goes, cause he goes, uh, what do you say? I'm a scientist. And, uh, and so he goes, I thought you're a high school teacher. And, and then Jack goes, let him talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, you're, uh, you said, what do you say? You're a hick or a hillbilly or a bumpkin, country bumpkin or something yeah, like that. Like What's that. great about that scene is, is that um, even though it's a brand new character injected into an established cast, um, the chemistry is already there. Right. With, 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 with the way Sawyer reacts and the way Jack reacts, it, it just tells the audience like he's been around this whole time right? and it's right. very successful the way they do it. We, um, we really, we really feel that everyone had like a past relationship with, with arts, I mean, yeah. like, you know, and, and they, and then he was annoying. I mean, I mean like, you know, yeah. Yeah, everybody had already had enough relationship with arts that he was annoying to them uniformly. So that's probably why he hasn't been around the last, I don't know, 18 episodes is because they were all avoiding him. Exactly. I swear I thought he was meant, I thought he was, he was mentioned in an episode. I again I could be wrong about that, but yeah. uh, anyway. Uh Kate tells Michael she, she, uh, she's going with him. I'm going with you. Again, there's Kate being demanding and he goes, Well, no, we already got four people and you can't go. So this is setting up, okay, you know, we've you know, uh, Ralph, you said earlier how it could have been so many different people that were poisoning yeah. Michael. Because right now I'm assuming okay, it's gotta be Kate. Right. Well, what's great is Jack talks about how there it could just be a mix up in the bottles. So it could have been not it could have been uh Walt po trying to poison Michael, Kate poisoning Michael, it could have been Kate trying to poison Sawyer, it could yeah, have been yeah, it could yeah, have been yeah. all of these things. And it's it's kind of fun because um you know, I while watching this episode, I'm like I was sitting there thinking the whole time, I'm like, I think it's I think it's sun and I think they mix up the bottles and, yeah. and I was like thinking about, it, I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. So there's so many different, they're so good at creating motives for so many different people that I still, after seeing this episode, how many times still wasn't exactly clear on who it was. I but also then, thought it could have, when I remember first time watching it, I thought it could have been Locke because remember Locke doesn't want anybody off the Island. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I think at this point, though, Locke is like already on the, uh, on the bottom of the list. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's. And we go back. Uh, go ahead. But I, I'm saying I don't think he, need, he needs to have anybody else's uh, yeah. problems on his hand. <laughs> uh, we go back to flashback. Kate scares Tom. She's sitting in the back of the car. Uh, she's she needs it to uh, see uh, her mom's. Diane's dying of cancer. And at this point, we don't know who Diane is yet, right? Yeah. She says, Diane, uh, son and Jen talk. She asks, are, are, you, are you going on the raft? He says, yes. So again, I, I, I wasn't, I know when I first watched this, I wasn't, I was never thinking son. Right. Yeah. And, and there's clues in there too. Yeah. And, and that's like our, really our only like major clue that, that Jen was the target the whole time that son doesn't want Jen to go. There's but, a point where Walt, where after Michael doubles over, Walt goes to find help and he finds um, Kate and son at the garden and son is holding a water bottle. So that's um, kind of a, that's kind of a little bit of a clue that she also has access to the water bottles. Yeah. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that's cool in the rewatch as you start. You're like, but Oh, there's like son there. had all those, those different kind of remedies. Yeah. You know, for Shannon, when boom was a, for Jackson, yeah. had, she had to, so we should have known from the start, but they did a good job of, of red you know, herring. When it was, when it was Michael, it was, well, why would she poison Michael? There's no reason for her to poison Michael. And, and that scene also shows that Kate and son are hanging out talking, 
you know, back at the garden. So when that reveal comes up <laughs> where we yeah. find out that, that Kate was the one behind it. Right. Uh, that's uh that's something that I completely forgot about. Yeah. I did. See, I, and the best part of that is that, you know, Jack kind of accuses Kate of poisoning, uh, Michael, because she had drugged him the, you know, the episode before, yeah. you know, right. and Kate, yeah. Kate is like, like, look so upset. Like, Oh, how could you possibly believe that I could be responsible for this? And, you know, and, and again, he wasn't trying to poison Michael. Jen, yeah. you know, Jen was the target, but she had engineered that whole thing to make him sick, to give her a slap yeah. to go on. And so that was just great. I mean, everything about that whole reveal is great. Yeah. Uh, Lock uh, and Jack. Uh, Lock and Saeed show Jack the hatch. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and Jack's not happy. <laughs> yeah. Jack wants it open, and Saeed's like, "Are you nuts?" Yeah. yeah. And so, <laughs> well, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I, I go, he goes, "Why didn't you open it?" And Lock, Lock's like, "You know, I, I think Lock wanted to kill him because I, I've been trying to do it, but right. he died you know, because of it." And, and there's no handle on the thing. I mean, like right. you know, it's it's not meant to be opened up from the outside, which which was you know, um, you know point. His yeah. point is like maybe we shouldn't be opening it up. Yeah. But I do like I like how they're going back and forth, and then Jack. I like how Jack questions Lock. How long do you know about this? About three weeks, and you didn't feel the need to tell me. And then Jack, Locke goes, "How long did you find those uh, guns? You didn't tell it to." He goes, "Need to know." So it's that, that whole friction too between the two of them, where neither one trusts each other, so they don't they don't tell each other anything. Yeah. It's actually what happens on and on and on. It's like when yeah. they found the medical hatch and no one told Jack, right, right, which which never made sense. Uh, Michael has stomach cramps. They don't know what's going on. Uh, then we go back to Jack wants to open it. Said wants to bury it. And, and Said, I, I actually kind of agreed with Said. He goes, there, if it was meant to be open, there'd be a handle on the outside of it. Yeah. Well, I have a question for you guys. If you can, I know this is a rewatch, but if you can think back to 15 years ago or whatever, did you guys have a theory? I'm sure you did of what was inside. Uh, no. <laughs> it, it, so all that we knew is that Locke had been like pounding on it episodes before and then a light came on. Right. And so, and so I felt that there must be somebody in there, but I, I did not imagine it would be a Scottish guy pressing a button every hundred yeah. minutes. I, I always I, thought it was going to be some sort of like disease or airborne disease. Cause like, I don't think we've seen the smoke monster yet. Right. We, we've not seen the smoke monster yet. We, we have not, we, we obviously have not actually seen its smoky form. We have seen that yeah. from its perspective. But when the hatch blew off and it said quarantine, that just seemed like a bad situation. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember, I remember it, thinking there was no one inside it because it was buried. And how could anyone get inside it if it was buried? I, I mean, it, right. I didn't, I didn't know there was another entrance that you know could easily yeah. just walk out. So from what the information we knew, I was think I did agree with Jack on one thing. I said, well, it could be shelter in there. You could yeah. use it, you know, if storms are coming or something, you know, something's coming, you could use it to, you know, it's better than having, you know, a tarp. But yeah. I, I, I never thought there was anybody inside it. Yeah. yeah, I thought there was something inside it, either some sort of disease or like a creature of some sort, because obviously there's something out there big enough to move the trees. And I figured, okay, this thing is definitely containing something. Uh, I didn't know what the light was. <laughs> I, it could have been anything. Um, but I, I think, yeah, it was. I think, I think maybe at one point I thought it was there to protect people. Like if you could get inside it to keep the monster from getting you. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah that, I mean, that, would, that would make yeah. sense. But again, how do you get in it? Right. Well, right. Um, I. Uh, I don't remember. I had like I didn't. Well, I didn't have any good theories about what was going on on the island. But clearly, we knew that there was. No, we didn't know that yet about the others who pick up Walt, uh, except that we had Ethan. Ethan was our only, um, at that point, idea that there was somebody else on the island. Right. So, so I assume that the hatch was something to do with Ethan and his people, or, or like whatever that was going on. But, uh, but unfortunately. I can't remember my mindset 15 years ago when I was watching the show fresh, but uh, that would have been, I can't even remember what I thought might be in the, uh, the hash, but you know, All I, can remember, I, I remember it was going to be something important because they spent so much time with it. 
And Lost is not yeah. one of those shows that does throwaway things where they go for, you know, episode, 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 then all of a sudden you just forget about it. But, yeah. you know, like, you know, early on, the, initiative, I guess, but uh, I mean, but, but early on the season, you know, we, we were given a, a mini version of the hatch in the Halliburton case where there was this locked item that, that was important to Kate. And so, and there were things of, of, of practical importance. Uh, there were the guns that were inside the case, but it was the, it was the mystery of that little airplane that was, was cool. So, so I, I think I assumed at some point that they would get the hatch open much like they got access to inside the Halliburton case and we would find just bigger like there would be like bigger practical use for it but also there would be like the mystery of something and and that kind of worked out I mean, particularly right. when you get orientation the film talking about what was going on there but uh, I remember but, at first some people were disappointed by the what was in the hatch yeah yeah I mean we, we wanted something I, more magical but yeah I I remember that I remember yelling at the TV screen at the finale because I knew time was was ticking down and we've been left with cliffhangers before. Uh, I remember yelling at the TV. Uh, we went to Comic Con in between uh, this finale and the opening of season two. Wow! And we sat in on that panel, and the first question is like. Well, we get to see what's in the hatch, and Damon and Carlton said, "Yes, you will know in the first episode." Uh-huh. Um, and then I remember as that scene unfolded at the beginning of season two, and slowly realizing what we were seeing, I was like, I was on board. Yeah, I wanted to know everything. Yeah, um, it, it's a it's a great opening sequence uh, in the season two. Yeah. Of just him him getting up and this repetition of his day because day, you doing think stuff. it's like Sawyer or something. You think it's a flashback. It feels like a flashback, right? Um, it does because it because there's, there's nothing in it that leads you to believe it's on the island, right? And, and the music is the music kind of gives it like a '60s, early '70s type. Make of your vibe, own kind. Right? Of, make your own kind of music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a, yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't think anybody guessed that. No, <laughs> that, that it was no. that it was a guy, you know? <laughs> right, right? A guy that Jack had seen in a previous life or a previous, yeah, life. yeah. not a previous life, but he'd seen another life, brother. <laughs> uh, we go back to the flashback, and Kate and Tom are driving out to a cool-looking tree. I've actually seen that tree. I've seen that tree too. I've seen that tree. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just cool to see that tree. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it's it's funny because you you see it and you're like, oh yeah, that's really cool. That, like it, it's so funny because it's not like a major scene, but there's that that big wide shot. It's and, well you know, lit. back then this it, was it, one of the few shows to have like HD like picture, and it's like this. It's boom. It's like instantly like this iconic shaped tree, and so when you see it, you're like, boom in your brain. You're just like, oh yeah. The, that whole scene with the I love that tree. Yeah. Anyway, it is a cool looking tree. Uh, they're digging for something. Uh, then we go back to on island. Michael's been poisoned. Michael thinks it's Sawyer, and now Sawyer's mad. <laughs> <laughs> we go over there about this. Hurley slip lets it slip about Kate. It's a it's a funny scene, and I I thought it was well acted on all parts because because then J- uh, Locke goes, well, when are you gonna tell us about this, Jack? And, well, need to know. They, they go back and forth, and it's 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 kind of like. You know they're they're playing poker, kind of like you know with yeah. with, 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 with each yeah. other. Or what's the what's the game that he plays with? Uh, connect uh, four? No, not connect four. Uh, backgammon. Um, Mouse trap. Backgammon. Thank you. Backgammon. Oh, backgammon. I I don't know if that would be a better one. Uh, Jack asks Kate if she poisoned Michael. We talked about this, and she goes, "You know, no, it wasn't me. I didn't do it." Uh, they dig up the box. It's a lunch box. It's got a baseball cap, a toy plane that we know of, uh, baseball cards, and a cassette. Now, the cassette was recorded on August 15th, 1989. 8-15. Yeah. yeah. So one of those clues that, you know, I don't think I, I caught it the first time I watched it. No. no I, I paid pay attention to it. Even though we knew Flight 815, I wasn't really thinking then about the, the numbers were fairly new at the time, too. Right. The Hurley episode was what, like two episodes ago or something, or just yeah. a couple. Yeah, yeah so it was close to right. They and, weren't the numbers weren't as burned into our head until the finale, 
when we see him on the side of the hatch and then we go into the hatch and in the bunker is the is the computer that you have to put the numbers and that's when we really started getting into the numbers because i think we i think in the finale we see the numbers on the the soccer jerseys yes yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but I, I it's funny when I watch it, I forgot about that the tape. I forgot about the tape that listen to it. I go, oh, that's right. Cause when you're first watching it, it's, it's August 15th. Yeah. You, you, okay, August 15th, big deal. Then you go, oh, wait, August 8th, month of the year, 15th. Uh, it's just and cool. Now, like on August, on August 15th, we celebrate also. Like now we lost fans know that as a date to celebrate. Exactly. Lost. One of the many dates we have to yeah. celebrate. Uh, Walt tells Locke he didn't poison his dad. He goes, well, we're friends. Well, I won't tell anybody. Uh, and Walt, uh, but then as Walt uh, Locke grabs his hand, Walt goes, don't open it. And what do you mean? Don't open that thing. Now, he doesn't say hatch. Right. Yeah. But at this point, are we thinking that Walt is special? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we have, we, we have thought Walt was special. I think even back in the first Michael flashback, where right. where uh, he was summoning birds or whatever, but um, but that but that that definitely is like is a the show telling us Walt has like the Shining or whatever. I mean, I mean, we you know he he is his privy to some kind of extrasensory information, um, and and we know that the Hatch. Like you know, is important to John Locke, and that that hatch is going to be opened up at some point. Um, and, and it's so, also um, really important to Michael's story down the road. Yes, yes. And so, so it, it's interesting but, to, to it's to see, and now that we've seen the entire series, what did Walt see in that vision? And what was it that he was worried that was going to happen? And 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 on rewatching the show, I, I'm. I tried to like make up like my own explanations for things that maybe have not been answered. Like Walt, a bit Locke and Boone a bit are trying to you a trebuchet to uh, crack open the hatch and they're having problems. And that's the episode where Locke has this vision of Boone all bloody that has them lead him off to the plane. Uh, and I, and I had just decided in my own way that, that that vision did not come from the man in black and it did not come from Jacob. It came from, like the hatch. I mean, like there's a, there's a force going on on the island that is trying to keep the hatch from being like disturbed. And, and, and I'll just go ahead and make this up without any kind of evidence whatsoever. But that's what we do here, right? But you know, I mean, like there's, there's simply magical stuff going on, on that island. You know, and the and the hatch has the numbers imprinted on it, and the numbers are important. I, I'm I'm happy to say that the numbers made it magical. So if if the hatch does not want to be disturbed. You know, and for whatever reason, it can't like kill Locke because Locke is important to the big powers of this be that are running things. Well, Boone is not important, and so Boone can be killed. And so there's a vision that leads, you know, to Boone's death. Anyway, so this is me making crap up, but I feel <laughs> that that Walt is hooked into this type of, you know, the hatch should not be disturbed for no real reason other than that the hatch didn't want to be. Disturbed. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's my feeling. That's my. Feeling. I don't want to criticize the writers, but would it have been better if if Walt's excuse for burning the raft the first time was something bad was going to happen if they took the raft out? Yeah, like instead, of, saying, instead of saying, I mean, it meant more it's more reasonable saying he, you know, he he moved around a lot. He finally was he liked the island. He was happy. But looking back on it, it would have been better if he said the reason I burned it because something bad was going to happen. Yeah, it. I guess. The question is, did the writers know that um, the raft was going to be launched and then the others were going to show up and take Walt back when he burned the first raft? Right. So if they mm. if they did know, because because, you know, o- over the years, I've heard like different interviews and and, and you know, like they were building a raft. And then at some point when the finale was coming up, they said, look, you guys have got to like launch that raft. And they're like, well, it, you know, it's not going to float. And they're like, we well, have to make it float because we got to get that raft off the island because it's stupid to have the raft and not launch it. So I don't know when they decided they were actually going to commit to having the, the raft hit the water. Well, I mean, I feel like they had to, they knew that they had to get rid of Walt somehow. Yeah. Because yeah. he would have rapidly aged from one day to the next. Right. As far as in story goes. So I don't, I'm not really sure why that short detour in the raft 
I don't know why that that exists, but um, I mean, I mean, do they burn the raft just to slow down the raft so it will be launched on the finale? Um, maybe. You know. I mean, it doesn't necessarily. They didn't. I mean, we as viewers would just have accepted the raft, even though it looks done. That, it's not that, ready yet. That it, that it took a while to to, yeah. to make it seaworthy. Yeah. 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 So I don't. I don't really know. Well, I can see why the others don't want the losties to find, you know, they don't want people coming to the island, but couldn't Ben have just turned the wheel and the donkey wheel and move the island, move the island. If someone... I feel like when he moved the donkey wheel in, what was that season four or five? Um, it was like, it was like a big decision. Like, yeah. That's not a decision to make lightly, you know? So and, I guess we better uh, share the, the losses and, and go back, but yeah. we can't rewrite the show. It's, it, it was fine the way it was. Um, <laughs> Sawyer out. <laughs> uh, Sawyer, uh, Michael kicks Sawyer. Uh, you're out, Sawyer, because he thinks it's yeah. Sawyer that poisoned him, which really doesn't make sense why Sawyer would poison Michael at this point. Right, it, it, right, because it's it's Sawyer's. I mean, it's Michael's boat. I mean, Michael is going right. with his son. I mean, you know, right. if yeah. Michael gets sick, then then the well, I guess. Then I guess we'll wait six months until the trade winds come back. You know, it's, it's right. just like one of those type of deal. But I think Michael, you know, Michael's not thinking rationally. And uh, Sawyer outs Kate. Then Sawyer outs Kate. Uh, then we flash back. Kate talks to her mom, and then Kate's mom, you know, it starts yelling for help. You know, Kate's like, "I'm here, mom. I'm here. Help!" She starts screaming for help. She knocks out a security guard. Uh, Kate goes, "Give me your keys, Tom." Of course, Tom gets in the car. I don't know why Kate just didn't lock the door. <laughs> You know, uh, Tom gets in the car. She keeps telling him, get out, get out, get out, get yeah. out, get out. And, and Tom, Tom, was, Tom was definitely in that car with the idea that she won't do anything stupid if I'm here. She's not going right. to endanger me. And she's like, get out of the car. And he's like, no, 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 just turn yourself in. So later on, I think Kate does mention that, you know, you know, she killed Tom. At some point, there is this type of admission or statement from Kate that she killed somebody that she loved. And, you know. She didn't literally kill Tom, but definitely she chose not to keep him safe when she decided to right. take off. Well, she she goes after the the cop, and she goes, and he's shooting, and I'm assuming that Tom gets shot and killed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Kate concerned Tom, Tom, and then she gets out and runs. Yeah, this is a way to kind of close up that loop, um, where where she says like it's uh, it belonged to the man I loved, it belonged to the man I killed, or whatever. Right, right, right. But if the show were to end there, you would think, oh, that's kind of a weird – we we still don't know why she was being chased Chained. down in the first place. Oh. So it didn't really close her it's story like, completely. We know there's something between her and the mom. The mom yeah. and the friend. Yeah. Yeah. We know that, and but we, we don't know that she's killed anybody. Yeah. There's no wanted. And that's what Kate says to Jack when he confronts her about the poison. She says something to the effect of like, do you think I'm someone that's capable of that? So it's like, yeah. it's like for the audience, we like, we don't know either. Right. Yeah, yeah. Jack's like, I don't know. Uh, are you capable of that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the marshal had a case full of guns for a reason. Yeah. And then everyone gathers around as Sawyer's going on and on. And Kate tells everyone, yeah, I was I was on the plane with the marshal. I was a fugitive. And yeah. So now everybody up. knows and we don't have to worry about who don't knows and doesn't know. But everybody gets that look like, <laughs> and they walk away from her. So saying, oh, you know, Kate, you've been cool on the island. You haven't been a problem. Okay. But no, everyone just goes, nope, she lied. She's the first person on this island that has lied, so we got to walk away from her. <laughs> right, right. Everybody else yeah. is very honest on that island. Yeah. yeah. Sawyer's done this and that and everything else and lock and all. You go on and on and on, but no. Uh, everyone's cool with that. Uh, or not cool with uh, Kate. Uh, Sawyer tells um, a Jack knows its son. Yeah. He, know, he, he figured out because he saw the bottle, figured out his son, that they mixed the bottles up, and uh, Son goes, yeah, but you won't. She, and Jack's not going to tell anybody. Um, Sawyer tells Kate he's leaving tomorrow. They, they kind of have a. He kind of he, he goes, are you going to apologize? He goes, that's not my thing. I don't apologize. Yeah. Uh, Walt tells Michael that we talked about earlier. He burned the first raft. Yeah. And and, and you know, to Michael's credit, he didn't go crazy. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 and, the, and the scene reinforces that Walt is kind of desperate to get off the island. Like he knows something bad is coming. Yeah. They have to go. Yeah. Because yeah, but- Mike, Michael even says, look, you know, if, if you don't want to go, you know, we can hang out here and eat coconuts and, and whatever. And, <laughs> and, 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 and Walt's like, no, no, we got, dad, we got to get going. Well, that's where maybe they didn't know at the time what was going to happen with. Uh, I guess they. I guess they had to know though. Yeah, they, they, they knew at that point. But yeah, Walt, Walt tells Michael, like you said, we have to go. Well, bad things happen when they went, right? Yeah. So, and it led to it led to Michael killing people because he had to do what yeah. you know. So well, we'll get to that later. You know, I'll, yeah, that could be what he. I am thinking he well, well, you saw know the, the, or something. I don't know. See, the, see, the deal is this: um, Lost is full of like unreliable narrators. I mean, you know, like like Rousseau is like an unreliable narrator when she's telling, you know, Saeed stuff, and you know, she gives bad information not because she's lying, but because she's just wrong about things or she's crazy. And so, so Walt has been given some information. But he is not he's not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. So right. whatever he saw was based on Locke and was based about the hatch. And so any danger that was going to happen with him on the raft, Walt just didn't get to read that book. He didn't get to get that information. So that's how I would uh, right. justify it. But but yeah, I, but, but, but it's a fair question. It's a fair question. And then we end with uh, Kate talking to Sun, and it was Kate's idea the whole time. The poison. Right on. Yep, yep. Yeah. And she got me again. Yeah. And, yeah. And I completely forgot about that until I was, I go, that's right. It was Kate. Because Kate, we, you know, we think as Kate is the, again, I, I made a comment about everyone just kind of walked away from her. But when you think about Kate, there is a reason to walk away from her. She's going to do whatever she can, what benefits her. Yeah. But, but, you know, but when we're watching the show and Jack, talks to the son and he goes, look, I know you're the one who poisoned Michael. And we're, and then we're thinking oh, Kate has been railroaded like, Oh, poor right. Kate. But, but you know, but no, maybe, maybe not so much. <laughs> maybe not so much. It's the brilliance of the show. Yeah. yeah it really, it really, it's like, okay, I got it. I got it. Oh no, I don't, I don't have it. I don't have it. Exactly. But I, again, I, I thought, um, I mean, what was your guys thoughts on this episode? Oh, this, this is a good episode. Yeah. I like this yeah. episode a lot more, uh, but it, I mean, it's ramping up to that finale. And yeah. the finale is amazing. So it, it's it's uh, it's a great episode. Once again, not really thrilled on flashback stuff anymore. I wish there was some way to watch it without them. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, um, but at the time you didn't say that. Well, no, not at the time. But with any rewatch of it since then, even the second time I've gone through, it's like like I want to I want to watch like a Hurley episode or a Charlie episode cuz there's a lot of fun stuff in there. Desmond episodes are always great uh to watch, but like sometimes where it's like where it's like Claire, Jin and Son, um uh even Michael, like you see some of these and I'm like I know the story front to back. I'm not going to learn anything new by watching these. Um but Jack has a tattoo. We got to know about how Jack got that tattoo. <laughs> yeah, I still, we- I still <laughs> listen. I've said it before. I think I say it at every Comic Con. Stranger in a Strange Land is a great episode because it throws you off the sense of the twist in the finale of season three, which is yeah. something like four or five episodes later. Right. Like it's a, it's their, it's their misdirection. Like it's here's Jack, call. right? Here's right. Jack, who's a, who's, who's down on his luck, and he's traveling from place to place on airplanes. So by the time you get to the finale, you're like, oh, we're, we're continuing on that storyline when we really aren't. So it, it's, it's not a great episode, but it serves a function it's that yeah. that when that season three finale happens. I was completely blown away. Yeah. Right. So, so. Well, I agree now, with that. It wasn't that it was a bad episode. I've said this a hundred times, and I think I've said it every Comic Con. It's the acting of one of the actresses in the episode is so bad. It really ruined it because they've always did, they always did a great job. Like, even the extra, you know, the, the, the guest stars were always top right. notch. I mean, they, they were, they got good actors on the show, yeah. and this one wasn't. 
and it, yeah. it 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 you can't hide. It's like the person you like you're you're playing baseball or hockey or you're playing a sport, and that one person has no athletic skill, and you you can't hide them. Yeah. She, she can't be hidden. I mean, she's just yeah. I, I, I nailed the chalkboard. I can't take it. I'm I fine. Like- with, I'm fine with it, but further instructions. I have major <laughs> issues with. And you'll definitely be on that one, Matt. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. But uh, I, I, I liked it. I thought a great episode. Like, so the flashbacks don't bother me. I, I, it's been a while since I've watched it again. So it's kind of, uh-huh. uh, forget about that. Forget about that. Again, we don't need to know. I, it's like, I remember at the time, like we're said at the time, well, Kate had to do something else. What did we, and finally we, yeah. we eventually find out what Kate did. But uh, <laughs> she invented Taco Tuesday, right? Is that what it was? Exactly. Oh, she coined Taco Tuesday. Why does everybody, why does everybody hate her? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all I got. You guys got anything else? No, I think we did a good job talking about the episodes. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I like I said before, like I always love talking in Lost. It's it's crazy that you know, there's always going to be something that you didn't see before, right? So unless you're watching the show frame by frame, there's always always going to be something new on on later rewatches. So, and, and it's good to on the rewatch to observe stuff going on and then uh, think about what's going to be coming up. Cause like there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. I mean, we were, we were kind of joking about, you know, the, the relationship between Kate and, and Sawyer and Jack and how, you know, it, it, it might simply be, Oh, I don't really care about the relationship stuff, but it plays out in interesting ways throughout mm-hmm. the series. Yeah. So it, uh, so it's just kind of fun to see like what's going on. And, and often people will say things, that are super ironic, like you know, uh, Charlie talking to Claire. It's like nobody's going to take your baby, but Kate is going to take Claire's baby. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, you know there is just definitely things going on that are have really great ironic significance on rewatch. Yeah. Again, brilliant to the show. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you guys want to promote? Okay. Uh, CasinoSkunk.com. That gives you links to everything. Um, jump on board, Kaiju Pod. Uh, dot com. It's me and Jorge doing a show every other week. Each episode is self-contained, so if you come across the Godzilla movie or something and you watch it, pop over to our feed. We probably have covered that episode and listened to us talk about it. I, I have nothing particular to promote. Um, I used to write a lot about Game of Thrones when it was on the air, um, and so when the new stuff, House of the Dragon, sh- shows up, I'll be writing about that for. Uh, the Watchers on the Wall fan site. So if, if anyone wants to go to watchersonthewall.com, they can find my work there. What did I, I? What did you think of the ending of uh, Game of Thrones? Uh, I'm I'm generally positive, but my feeling is that n- nobody would have any complaints about every plot point that happened if the last two seasons had been ten episodes as as normal. I thought that it was just too rushed, and 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 um, anybody who feels it was too rushed, I have no problem with what they're saying. People who are angry that like Daenerys, you know, did what she did. To me, it, I thought it was justified in the sense that I could see that it was going to be happening. Uh, it just it wasn't delivered in a in a with the right pacing that I needed to make it like perfect. So I felt that uh, that it was not a ending that I really feel a need to defend. Like I feel like I need to defend loss. I mean, I feel people just misinterpret what's going on the last season of it's Boston. still it's and still a punchline yeah it's yeah. like it's like man and you, you guys don't get it that show was so good and the the character work was so good but but, but you, ralph you go ahead i don't mean to. i was down. gonna ask you do would you would you prefer game of thrones taking over the mantle of being the punchline <laughs> like is it, it's it's because it's crazy because you still hear about the ending of lost and yeah, the it's cr- this show was such a big deal and it's still in people's brains that that's the punchline when it, it comes a, to like disappointing finales. It, it's a good question. I guess it, 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 if you're asking, do I, what I want game of Thrones is <laughs> ending to be the punchline to kind of redeem loss. So people won't be complaining about lost as much. I don't know. I, I think if somebody comes to me and say, man, that, the ending of Lost sucked, well, then I have like an hour of material to yell at them about. <laughs> Whereas if they say to me, I didn't like the end of Game of Thrones, I would say, let me give you a hug. It, it's rough. You know, I mean, I, I sympathize yeah. with what you're saying that I did not, you know, I enjoyed it more positively than you did, but I can't blame you for not liking it. But 
people who don't like loss, I just don't want them in my house. You know, yeah. <laughs> I just tell people simply, yeah. I go, you ever watch Dexter? If it's Dude, Dexter or, go watch Dexter from start to finish and then come back and tell me that if, loss has the worst ending. Yeah. If, if people want to complain about like really good shows and say that they're disasters, they need to go and watch all of heroes and then come and talk to me. Yeah, I have heroes, a hunch. Man, um, I have a hunch that people who talk about the loss finale are people who, watched the finale only and didn't watch the whole series. Like the only episode of Sopranos I've ever seen was the last episode of Sopranos. I have a friend and, who watched, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. But, but it's one of those things where it's like, if you haven't watched the entire series, yes, you will think that last episode means that they've been dead the whole time. Or, or which just, is not the case. Or, or you'll just have like a really weird idea. Cause I had a friend who watched half of lost decided to skip to the end and see what happens in the last episode and then refused to watch anything else. And she had this really crazy interpretation of what was going on. And I, you know, I, I can't do anything about that. They, they, they have, yeah. they have shot themselves in the foot as far as I'm. So I guess what I'm saying is let's say the next time someone either complains or says something about, about the finale of lost, just ask them straight out. Well, did you watch the entire series? Yeah. Cause I feel like, the point, the whole point of the finale, well, I'm not going to say it's definitive, but one of the points of the finale is it's not about the ending, it's the journey. Yeah. Right. And so if you don't go on that journey, the ending means nothing to you. So it, it, it may be the, the counter argument to anybody that brings up that finale lost and says, well, did you watch the series from beginning to end? Um, and if I they don't... did, then you could probably have a pretty decent discussion. Yeah. I've said this a hundred times. That I, I no longer correct people. If they say right. they've yeah. had those times, I go, okay. Because I, I remember I, it was a, about a year ago, we were at Jay's house for a party. Jay wasn't there. It was of a course. Birthday, birthday party for <laughs> This guy's like going, I didn't know who he was. He's just like, oh, yeah, you did the lost thing with your Jay, right? I go, yeah, I did oh. the you know, podcast. He goes, yeah, I, I, you know, I just, I hated the show because they were dead the whole time. I go, yeah, um. okay. And I did, he was going on and on and on. I just was, I was just looking at him like, oh. I, you know, it's one of those things where I actually just tuned him out. Right. And he's going on about it, this, this, this. And I'm like going, well, once he said they were dead the whole time, I said, yeah, I, I, a lot of people didn't like it. You need, to do that last, to, you need to do that last Jedi thing and say, just when he's done talking, everything you said is wrong. <laughs> yes, every, every single thing that you've said is wrong. Yeah, sometimes people just are should be allowed to just live in their wrong world and you don't yeah. you it's, yeah. it's not your responsibility to bring them enlightenment. Yeah. Cuz I try, I tried like for the first year, I tried cuz we, we took a lot hard, of man. we took a lot of crap for you know, people saying, "Oh, you just cuz you work for ABC that yeah, that you, whole crap would, would always crack yeah. me up. I go, I'm not getting any paychecks. <laughs> but you know, you, you, that's, that's like, oh, you only liked it because you worked for ABC and the whole thing. They would do that, and I'm like going, I go, no, I liked it because I truly enjoyed it. And yeah. for me, it, it worked. It, it, I always said, I go, it worked for me. I understand it didn't work for Dude, you. Dude, we 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 were in that room together at the Orpheum watching that finale, yeah. and like there was an energy in that room, like you can feel that everybody in that room was like 100 percent on board because oh, yeah. and, and the fun what's funny thing the funny thing about it is is the way the lost finale ends was like symbolic of where we were physically like it's it's all about all the characters coming to that church and it was people from around the world coming to los angeles to be with jay and jack this community that they built and it was like it was like we're, we're looking at a mirror yeah <laughs> well when all the people from uh, flight 815 walk out of the church that was it for us and then we all got up and walked out of the theater and you our, know our, it was it was a hard I remember that night having it being like really tough to have conversations I, I it, cannot avoid getting emotional thinking about Jack laying down in the jungle with Vincent you mm -hmm. know that, that that's his end and you know it gets me every time so yeah yeah I agree that, that doesn't get me so much as the final in the in the final season. Any time they would touch hands, and they would connect through the the flashing the flashes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like when Kate touches Claire, and she's flashing to when Aaron is born and yeah. stuff. Like every moment like that, but like especially the the Sawyer and Juliet one. 
Sure. I think that's the one sure. they saved for the end. And it was like, it, it, that stuff got me. If I was going to go back to the, the uh, last finale party at the Orpheum, I was in, I was part of the, we would have meetings w- once a week, twice a week, sometimes with the uh, global cash card, Michael Purcell and Jay and Colin, we'd have meetings discussing what we'd have. And it was uh, sometimes there was hassles and, th- but everything was recorded before all the, the panels and stuff before it was recorded afterwards. If I could go back in time, I wish we had cameras on the audience watching it. Yeah, because, yeah. Like Ralph said, it was like one, it was like everyone, it was what, 2000, whatever it was, everyone was one. They yeah. cheer, they laugh, they cry, they clap. Dude, I mean, the roar, the roar of the audience when Jack does that leap with the knife towards Locke, like and they go the place erupted. <laughs> and they and go then, to commercial. And then, the, but what's great about the commercials were, is that during commercials be like chatter you just hear yeah. chatter oh yeah and it was yeah. it was amazing it was like it was like listening to podcasts or being on message boards in real time in person face to face like these are people that um would introduce themselves as screen names what, what, before before the show started and you'd be like i know who you are i know who you are and you start recognizing people from like avatars and stuff and so like you would kind of search sit next to people that kind of gravitated towards like my show or something. And then, um, um, but just like, yeah, those commercial breaks where it just be chattering back and forth and you're like sitting there and you're trying to get as much stuff out as you can during the commercial break. Because everyone's going to be super quiet. When that and then when the on. show, when the show <laughs> came back on, when the Not show about. came back on from commercial break, I don't even think people would say, Shh. I think it was just, it just boom. All yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It was, uh, it was, I wish I could relive it. I wish there yeah. was a way to be able to experience that again for the first time. Um, it, ha- it happened so fast. I, I yeah. don't remember a lot of what happened. And it, yeah. like, at the beginning, we were running back and forth, running back and forth. And I'm like going, and I just like, I wish I could go back in time and just kind of sit back and watch everything happen. Yeah. And, and, but again, I like, for, you got me thinking about the audience. It just was so, it was just amazing how it just, yeah. it was, no, I mean, because we were watching the West Coast feed, so it was out there. I mean, Luckily, we all didn't have smartphones. Yeah, true. So, but I don't, I don't think anyone would have spoiled it anyway. I don't think so either. And I think what was funny because before, before the show started, everyone was out in the lobbies and stuff, and we were meeting and talking to each other. Uh, I got to go into like the special like little basement area where you guys had like burritos and and booze and stuff and drinks, and so like. It, I just remember like hanging out with like Colleen and Cliff and, and uh, uh, there's so many people. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of his name, Malcolm Kelly. Is that his name? I never, I never played, yeah. He was, he was there. Uh, uh, the kid who played young Ben Linus. Uh, there was some Dharma folk in there. Michael Emerson was there, but I didn't meet him then. I, I think he was hanging out more backstage with you guys. Right, he was there, right? Yeah, he was, I remember. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was one of those things that was just like it was it was crazy. It the finale worked so well in that room because of the way the finale was presented. It was presented like all the characters were going to a lost party and they all showed up at the church. And it's almost like the producers knew that people were going to be getting together with friends and family and the people they're closest to to watch this event. And they're like, let's just show them that they are no different than these people that, that any of us could have been trapped on the Island and any of us could be like, uh, create this afterlife with their most special people in our lives. And Jay and Jack created like the biggest, (laughs) the biggest church ever, uh, uh, for that night. It was, dude, it's like, like I said, I want to go back. I wish I could go back to that night. It was, it went by too fast. Um, yeah, I would love to kind of like be able to like stop and savor it more, but the show's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, anyone who says anything bad about the finale, I think you're, you're, I think we want to fight you. Yeah. Yes. yeah. You're better just being like, just have your eyes glaze over and think about that night. And then it, it should just wash them away. It doesn't, cause it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter what other people think. No, I, um, I don't, I don't, I don't think you have to bad for them. I feel bad for him that they didn't get the same experience that I did, but um, I, there's nothing I can do about that. 
you yeah. know. Yep. Well, I think that's a good note to, to end it on. <laughs> Cool. Good job, good, good job, guys. <laughs> thanks for joining us. Thank, thank you very much. It, yeah, it thanks. An honor for me. It was an honor for me to be able to podcast with you. So no, you were thank, great. Thank you. This was fun. Yeah. All right, guys. Remember, subscribe, tell a friend, uh, thumbs up, all that fun stuff, and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>